Today I'm starting a three-part series on what is heaven like. Today I want us to consider that heaven is like everything new. The afterlife. For centuries, people have had various views of the afterlife. The ancient Egyptians had a very elaborate understanding and view of the afterlife. They mummified their bodies, believing it would be preserved for the afterlife. They were often buried with furniture, food, and even sometimes had servants mummified and buried with them so that they could be served in the afterlife. Did you know that some of them, especially some of the pharaohs, even buried boats? That's correct. Around the Great Pyramids, archaeologists discovered boat pits. In these boat pits were disassembled boats, each piece being marked. It was for the afterlife of the pharaoh. There's not a nail in it. It's all held together by rope. Now, if you come to my office, you'll see a picture. In fact, let me see if I can get the camera to the picture. This is the Great Pyramid Boat, the Boat of Cheops, all made of wood. The couple you see on the left happens to be my parents when we took a trip to Egypt. It's about 150 feet long. This boat dates to about 2,500 years BC, the oldest known boat ever discovered. That dates to approximately 400 years, even before Abraham. The Greeks also had a very elaborate understanding of the afterlife. And so did many other ancient cultures. But I want us to consider, when we think of the afterlife, of what is heaven like. For the Christian, the Bible gives a very different picture of the afterlife. And it describes what heaven will be like for those who are blessed of God to have eternal life. I'm going to read from Revelation Chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. This is a New International Version. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these are words trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Revelation promises that nothing's going to be the same. There's going to be a lot of new things, a new body, a new Jerusalem, a new experience in the life, in the presence of God. He even speaks of a new bride. And in verse 5, he says, I'm making everything new. Now, most of us today don't construct elaborate tombs 
and put our furniture in them or bury food with us. And a mummified body will be of no use for us as we will be given a new and glorified body. Paul tells us about this in 1 Corinthians 15. I'd like to turn there for a moment. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 57. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. All things will be made new. We will have a new glorified body. We will have a new life in the presence of God himself. To do so, however, you must first have a new spiritual life here on earth. And that can be yours if you believe that God exists. If you believe that Jesus Christ is his only begotten son, that he came and died a cruel death on the cross and was risen again. If you confess your sins, acknowledge, admit that you are a sinner and you want to change by the power of God. Repent of that sin. That's what change is. Confessing the name of Jesus, being baptized, buried. We talked about burials with the Egyptians. Be buried in Christ in the watery grave of baptism so that you might be forgiven of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and eternal life. That can be yours. And all things can be new. You can have a new life and be a new creation in Christ right now. I hope you either have or soon will make that decision. God bless.